Thank you to Taskade for sponsoring this video. So what is going on everyone? Fernando Silva here with another video and if you clicked on this video, this is going to be the one and only iPad OS 15 video you're going to have to click on because today we're going to go over every single change that came from iPad OS 14 to iPad OS 15, talk about the features, the bug fixes, the improvements, so you can take full advantage of that new software that you probably just installed because Apple, depending on when this comes out, probably just released iPad OS 15 to the entire public, and you're gonna be surprised how many iPads they're going to be supporting with this new iPad OS 15 update. And it's gonna be awesome, especially for people with the older iPads that are gonna get something new and tangible and make your iPad feel brand new. So without further ado, let's get into this video and talk about every single change that we see on iPad OS 15. Let's get into it. Before we jump into the actual features and changes, I did want to list out all the different iPads that iPadOS 15 is going to be compatible with. And that's the amazing thing about Apple. Yes, you can kind of yell at them and say, hey, we're not getting enough multitasking or we didn't get this feature or pro apps. But if you have a 2015 iPad Pro, the first gen iPad Pro, you are still going to be able to get iPadOS 15. That is six to seven years later. Apple's still supporting those devices. And then in terms of other iPads, you go with the iPad Air up to the Gen 2. So these are all very old devices. And then the OG iPad 5th generation, and now we're on the 8th generation. iPad Mini 4, I believe, as well. So again, you gotta give kudos to Apple for supporting these older devices and supporting them correctly and supporting them well, right? From a security standpoint, and also from just a feature and performance standpoint, right? Apple's able to still, with these older devices, give us a tangible difference in operating systems with iPadOS updates that make you feel like you have a brand new iPad, when in reality, you paid for that iPad five years ago. But now that we got that housekeeping out of the way, let's get down to the iPad and figure out exactly what's new with iPadOS 15. So let's get started with this video, everybody. The first thing I do want to mention is that if you guys stay tuned and subscribe to the channel, you'll see that in two days we'll be doing a shift screen giveaway, which will include an iPad Pro and a secondary monitor in order to actually use shift screen. So definitely stay tuned for that. It'll be coming out probably in the next two to three days. But now we can actually talk about iPad OS 15 and see what's going on. So we'll go into the settings. You can see that we're in the about section. So if I go back, go into the about, you can see that we're on iPad OS 15 right there. So that's fine and dandy. And then the first thing that you're gonna notice is on the home screen. So the home screen looks a little bit different than what it did with iPadOS 14. iPadOS 14 introduced the Today View and they allowed us to pin the Today View and keep it on the home screen. Now, Apple got away from the Today View. They still technically kept it, so if you swipe to the left, you do have the ability to put widgets in this section, but you can no longer pin it to your home screen, which is something that I really, really liked because it made me feel as if I was watching or using a different operating system than iOS, even though it technically was the same, you know, but it gave me a, a different feel because it was visually different. But now that Apple got rid of the Today View, they did allow us to now put widgets anywhere on the screen, which is, you know, I don't know. I mean, it was a hooray moment, kind of, but iOS 14 already allowed us to do that on the iPhones. So bringing it over to iPadOS 15 seemed like a no-brainer. It is, doesn't really add much functionality, but you can see that now, if you want to add new widgets, you just press plus, hold down on the main screen, and you can see that we have an abundance of widgets. And we did get a bunch of new ones in new sizes that are dedicated to iPad OS. So before we only had the small, medium, large ones, and now we have extra large ones. So if we go into the files, you can see that we have a medium one, a large one, and then an extra large one. So if we add this one, you can see how much bigger this is than the normal widgets. Obviously, you were not going to be able to put a widget this size on an iPhone with iOS 14 or iOS 15. And they work the same way. So you can grab it, you can move it over, put it to the other side, you know, you swipe up and then it stays there. So, and then again, you can actually interact with these widgets. So if I wanted to, let's say, click on this, which could be the actual thumbnail for this video, depending on what you guys are seeing. And it takes me right into the files app. So that's awesome that I guess Apple let us grab widgets and move them around. But the one thing that I also despise about Apple's system with this grid is that it still follows that top left to bottom right design language. So if I grab this widget right here and I wanna to try to move it all the way over here, it won't let me, and it'll just fling back over there because there's no other apps. So if I wanna grab this one, you can see that all the apps move to the top left and then kind of reorganize themselves. But you can see that everything gets thrown out of proportion when I do that. And if I move it back, then everything is still kind of all wonky, but now we're back to normal. So Apple is still following that grid design language of top left to bottom right, which is, hey, to each their own. So the next thing that they actually added to the home screen is this new icon down here. So this is another feature that came from iOS 14 over to iPadOS 15, because again, it was a no-brainer for Apple to just add this and make it seem like a new feature 
on iPadOS 15. But if you click on here, you're greeted with the new app library or the app drawer if you're an Android user and that's what you've kind of used in the past, right? So you have two ways to actually access it. You have this bottom right icon, which again brings up the app library, but then you can also swipe all the way to the right and pull it up that way. So what I actually like to do, you have an option inside of the settings. So if you go into settings, go into home screen and dock, you can actually remove that little icon and now it's gone, but you still have access to your app library if you swipe to the right. It's up to you if you wanna keep that folder down there. I like to remove it, and I also don't like to have the suggested apps, which I'll show you real quick. You can actually put your suggested apps and the app library right there, and then boom, you have your app library right there again. So let's stick with the actual home screen. With this new iPadOS 15 update, this is actually the one update that we're first gonna talk about that wasn't included in iOS 14. So if you go to your control center, swipe down, you now have this option to go into focus mode. So focus mode is just a new iteration of the do not disturb, which allows you to kind of break it up into specific do not disturb modes. So if you click on this, you now have options, right? The first one is the original do not disturb, which blocks calls. Basically people were turning on when they wouldn't want to get in contact with you or if you're driving, things like that. But now you can actually set up different ones, like a personal one, a work one, a sleep one, one that you're driving, maybe one while I'm currently filming. So basically, if you click on one of them, you can set them for an hour until this evening, until I leave the location, go into your settings, and you can actually customize your focus modes and you can decide what you want it to do. So if I'm in a personal focus mode, I can decide, hey, these people can contact me, I can use these apps, but that's it, right? And you can have different modes. And I think this is as close as we're gonna get, at least for the time being, for unique users. So imagine a situation where you do only have one iPad, but you have two different users of that iPad. Yes, you're logged into only one person's iCloud and things like that, but now you can have a do not disturb mode or a focus mode dedicated to one person and then another focus mode dedicated to another person. So that's one way as to how you can maybe get different profiles on the iPad Pro. Thanks again to Taskade for sponsoring this video. So Taskade is an online task management and collaboration tool that I've been using for the last nine to 10 months. I needed something that could help me organize my workflow, come up with ideas, and kind of build my schedule as a solo person. So I didn't want to spend money or time setting up a Notion account or a Monday.com account. So in steps Taskade. Taskade is a great for collaboration. It's great for solo to-do lists and getting everything ready and organized. So the way that I use Taskade is right here. So with my video timelines, I come up with my video ideas. So I go to my non-sponsored post, I go to my video timeline, and I use this as a scrum board. And you can see that the new UI is a lot different, a lot better than it was about a year ago. Now we have dark mode. Now you have the ability to organize in lists, boards, however you see fit. And this is what I use it for. So I have my scrum board. I have my video ideas written down. So as I'm completing my tasks, I can actually move them over. So if I go from video idea to then filmed, it then moves over to here and then edited, thumbnail completed, and then ready for upload. So this is the way that I use Taskade. Again, huge shout out to Taskade for sponsoring this video. And now back to iPadOS 15. Okay, so the next thing we're gonna talk about is multitasking. Multitasking on iPadOS 15 fundamentally hasn't really changed much, right? Fundamentally, multitasking is pretty identical, but what they did was they added a new way of actually interacting and getting to multitasking, which in my opinion is actually better, it's friendlier and more intuitive. So before, if you wanted to get into multitasking, you would have to, like I just did, open Safari, then swipe up slowly from the dock, and if you swipe too fast, then you get out of there. So that was one of the issues I used to deal with before. If you swipe up too fast, you have to like do the perfect amount of gesture in order to pull them up, and then you can grab one of the applications, move it over, put it into multitasking. You know, that was cool, fine and dandy. But now, with multitasking, if I go into Safari, let's get rid of this one, now you can actually just swipe down, right? Swipe down in order to open up a multitasking window, and the beautiful thing about this is that now you're not limited to the items that are or applications that are in your dock. You can do any of these applications. You can even go to your app library and start to open up split view like that. So if I want to open up Twitter, boom, it's perfect. What's up, Viper? Right? You can still resize the windows, which is nice. And then even if you go into multitasking with this side-by-side -side view, you can now individually delete those applications from the multitasking view. So if I go back here, let's try it again. Swipe down. Let's open up something like Microsoft Word. Press next, or we'll cancel that, and we'll swipe up. And you can see that I can quit out of Safari and then quit out of Word in the multitasking view. Another way that multitasking got an improvement is if you don't want those gestures, you actually have these three dots up here that you can click on, and it'll let you decide what you wanna do. So you can do split view, which we were doing. Same concept, right? So let's pick an application, let's do YouTube. You can even go again here, press this. So let's say you're done with YouTube and you just wanna do it at the slide overview. That's a possibility as well. And then you can just swipe out of there and then there's a little arrow right here that allows you to access it. So if you ever wanna bring it back, you can swipe it. 
Same thing with these three dots. This is how you control everything. So you can throw it over there, throw it back this way, and even grab it if you want and move it into another split view. So those are all the different ways that multitasking works. And again, it's fundamentally the same, but from a gesture standpoint, it's just a friendlier environment to use in. And then the last thing that I wanna show you with multitasking is if you swipe out of here, let that go away, go back to your home screen, and if you go back into multitasking, you can now see that your slide over windows, they show up like iPhone apps on the right side of your multitasking screen. So you can still control them like any other multitasking window. You can even grab it, move it in here, which is nice. So these are all different ways that again, you can play with multitasking. If I click on here, boom, we're right back into YouTube. So you can see how much better and intuitive multitasking is, even though once you get to where you wanna be, it's pretty much exactly the same as it was last time, which is that side-by-side -side view. Another new feature that actually came into multitasking with multiple instances. So with iPadOS 14, we were able to add multiple instances of the same application, especially with some native applications. So to pull up an application the old way, you just grab the Safari, pull it over, and now we have two instances of Safari running at the same time. Like we saw before, you can just swipe down to get another instance of Safari and pull that up again. So that's a beautiful thing to see. So now there's something new called the App Shelf. So if I wanna open up a new Safari window, now you can see that there's something down here. So this is called the App Shelf. So this allows you to manage multiple instances of the same application at one time. So here you can see that I have my double multitasking screen here. We can add a new window to work with, add another one if we want. And then if you wanna manage them all at the same time, you hold down on the Safari tab, show all windows, and then you're greeted with this. So you have all your different instances of Safari. So you have your two multitasking windows, you have the other two that we pulled up, and then we can reopen closed windows as well. You can add more if you would like. So there's multiple ways now to work, especially within native applications with iPadOS 15, in terms of multitasking with those instances of that application. So now that we got some of that OS system stuff out of the way, you saw that we have new multitasking, we have the new focus modes, uh, the new widgets, all that good stuff. Now let's talk about some of the improvements that the physical native applications got, right? So the first one has to be Safari. Safari is kind of revamped a little bit and it was a little bit of a controversy, especially on the iOS 15 side, because the address bar was moved to the bottom and people didn't like how that looked. We never had that issue with iPadOS because again, putting that at the bottom wouldn't make any sense. But you can see how the Safari layout is a little bit different. You can see that we now have tabs that look way different, right? And you have different options within the actual settings app. So if we go into the settings menu, then go to Safari. So let's find Safari over here. We now have a few options, right? So the first one that you'll see here is extensions. Extensions are a new thing that are, that's coming to Safari. Right now it's still in its infancy. So the only extensions that you can actually find is if you click on more extensions, this is the only way to actually access the extensions library in the app store. You have to go through the settings, but you can see that every single extension, they're ad blockers, right? You still can't get like a Honey extension or a Grammarly extension. You can't do a VPN extension. This is all for security and ad blockers. Do they work? Absolutely, they work as advertised, right? So if you download an ad blocker, so let's do Kablock, right? Let it download for a second. We'll go back to our settings menu. You can see that Kablock is there and I can turn it on whenever I want. And then another thing that changed, again, with the address bar is you now have the ability to change it up, right? So you have the compact tab bar, which is what I showed you. And if you go and change it up to the separate tab bar, you can actually go back into Safari and see that we now have a dedicated URL bar and then the tabs underneath, right? I actually prefer it this way because it's a little bit more familiar, a little bit easier to use. So that's a beautiful thing to see. And again, you can navigate everything with a touch of a button. And then you also have some new controls on the top right. So you still have your share button, you still have your plus button, but you now have this button to allow you to give you a better view of all the tabs. You can click on here. This is how you access your private tab now, new empty group tab, new tab group for the six tabs. You can add a new page right here, which is nice. And then if you even continue with Safari, so this is the landing page for generic Safari. If you scroll all the way down, you have the ability to edit what your Safari is gonna look like. So press on here. You can change up the start page, add favorites, iCloud. You can even change your background. So if I wanna do one of these, I can change my background for my Safari tabs, which is nice to see. So a little bit more customization on the Safari side. And I'm a big fan of Safari. It works well. It's desktop class browsing on the iPad Pro or any iPad OS device. Another thing that was added is if you click on the two A's right here, you now have a bunch of new actual settings, right? You have the ability to hide the toolbar, which is nice to have. You also have the request mobile site, which isn't new. Privacy report, which is a new report system that Apple's adding into here with Safari to let you know what they're doing in the back end to prevent you from losing any data, getting hacked, ransomware, anything along those lines. And then you also have the website settings, which allows you to do whatever you need here, right? Allow for camera and things like that. So that is kind of Safari in a nutshell. You also have 
this new finder kind of situation, which the one thing that I do not like about this new situation is if you want to get to your bookmarks, there's too many touch points, way too many touch points for me, right? So you have to click on here, then I got to click on bookmarks, then I got to go to my YouTube tabs, and then I click on my actual bookmark. And if I want to go back, I can't just like swipe it away. I have to press back, 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 and then I'm back to the full screen. So I, I want Apple to kind of give me the ability to just gesture it away and gesture it back. But for now, that's what we're dealing with. So now that we got Safari out of the way, the next app that actually got a big haul over was the Apple Notes application. So this is the other native application that got an upgrade with iPadOS 15. So the main things that happened is Apple's trying to create a new collaboration tool or trying to make Apple Notes sort of compete with things like Google Docs, you know, Microsoft OneNote, those collaboration and team tools that allow you multiple people to see things in real time. So if you guys do remember, we did get that new shape situation in iPadOS 14, which allowed you to draw perfect shapes like circles, squares, triangles, as long as you hold it down and then you get those perfect shapes, even just straight lines, you can see. So that's all new from iPadOS 14. But this year, there's a couple new options. So the first one, so if you go in here into your settings, you now have the ability to share your note. So if you share your note, you can share it and send a link to people that don't even have iOS. So if somebody is not an iOS user or an iPadOS user, but you still want to collaborate with notes, you're more than welcome to, right? You can send an email link, a text link, you can send it on Twitter if you want, on Slack. So if you want to create like a crazy community or a collaboration tool, post a link on Twitter and see how many people actually join in on that. The next thing that was actually added is the ability to add tags. So another way to categorize all your different notes, because if you see after a while, yeah, you can divvy up your notes into different sections like I have right here. But look, I have a total of 925 notes. And in some of them, as you can see, 143, 227, 372. So now with the ability to add tags, you can now go down here, get a little hashtag going and say new note. I know I spelled that wrong, but you can see that it's kind of like highlighted and then you press return. And now you can see that it's a new note. So whenever I search for the, I guess the mu note, right? So if I swipe down, search M-E-U, boom, it's right here. So there is my note. You also have the ability to mention people with the same way you would mention anybody else in an Instagram post or in Twitter. You just use their at sign. Once they're invited, you have the ability to mention them. So if you don't have anybody in the actual collaborative note take, then you're not gonna be able to tag anybody, obviously. But again, that is an option there. So if you wanna tag your friend or your collaborator or your colleague that's on the same note, by all means, now you can do that. So the very last new update that we got with Apple Notes is, so if you guys remember, I think it was an iPadOS 13 when it first kind of divvied up, swiping from the bottom left allowed you to take a screenshot with the Apple Pencil, which is perfect. And then you can annotate, do whatever you want. You know, we all kind of enjoyed that because it was a quick way to take a quick screenshot. But then when Apple introduced this year, it was in the bottom right, if you swipe up, we now get this new quick note floating menu, which is something that's a little bit interesting, which we haven't seen before. And it's actually very, very useful, which is very cool to see. So you have the ability to pull this up from anywhere. So you don't need to be on the home screen. So for instance, let's press done. Let's open up Safari here, right? Let's go to the multitasking windows that we were using. We'll quit out of this one. And now we have this, but now even though we have an application open, we can now pull from the bottom right and now you have your notes or your quick note application. And what's beautiful about this is, yes, it's a cool application and it's a cool way to actually take quick notes at a glance, you know, save URLs, copy, paste some text, but also it lets us foreshadow into what it could look like to have floating windows. Cause as you can see, you can throw this around anywhere on the screen. It has a little bit of inertia on the screen. You can resize it, make it as, kind of as big as you want, but also as small as you want. So imagine a world where you have like five, six, seven of these floating around and they allow us to even use, make them smaller and even bigger. And that's what I'm thinking multitasking could be in the future for iPad OS 15. But let's see exactly what happens there. But again, you can see that I can go here, I can copy it here, go into here, press enter, enter, enter. And then I can paste that in there, which is awesome to see. And then also, as you can see, I have a couple links that I saved before. I can actually grab this, pull it over to the side, and now I'm in another multitasking window. And that is a new awesome quick note feature that Apple added. And again, I think the feature itself is great, but also it gives us that foreshadowing and that look as to what it could be like to have multiple windows in a real multitasking situation with iPad OS 15. And you can see that it does hide over to the right. So if I want to slide it over wherever I am, I can do that, bring it down, move it over. So again, very like malleable and you can kind of move it around the entire operating system. So the next awesome feature that Apple brought to iPad OS 15 is this feature called live text. So live text, is very, very cool. And originally, I didn't know I had this second application, but what it's for originally is to read and be able to interact with text from a photo. So again, 
These are photos, so you can see that right here, it's a normal screenshot that I took. If you click to get more information, right, you have this new option on the bottom right. You click on this option, it highlights all of the text and images that you can actually use, right? So here, if I wanna just grab this, I can actually copy it like it's normal text. And then the second application that I saw is that it actually reads QR codes. So if this actually has a QR code link or it leads to something, you actually click right on, the, on there and then open it in Safari directly, which is awesome. And again, I'm in the middle of an image. So we'll get out of here. So it doesn't just work with something that's super easy to read. This one is a little bit different. If I go here, you can see that I can actually grab this, highlight it all, copy it. Let's pull up the quick note feature to paste it in there. So let's go here. Boom, so you can see that it actually worked really, really well. And you can see that multitasking in this situation is kind of cool because you have a quick note. Let's say you have an image that you got to pull, extract some information from, copy and paste it over to the quick note, boom, and you're good to go. So live text will allow you to interact with anything that's like words, verbiage. It also works with handwriting. Apple's had some crazy, crazy demos in terms of like scratched up handwriting, still being able to be read with live text. So live text, I think in my opinion, is gonna be a great feature especially in a translation situation. So this is actually a perfect segue into the new Translate app that came natively to iPadOS. So for some reason, Apple only gave iOS a Translate app, which I guess kind of makes sense because you're, you have the phone in your hand and if you're interacting with somebody else that you don't understand the language, it's a little easier to pull out a phone than it is an iPad, for instance. So the iPad finally gets an auto-translate feature. They get an auto-translation conversation feature, which is cool. So this app is awesome. If you guys need it, it's very self-explanatory, but it's a new application that Apple added to iPadOS. So the next thing I do want to talk about are two features that they were technically announced with iPadOS 15, but as of right now, we don't have them. And one of them actually came and went. The first one is SharePlay. So SharePlay is a new feature which Apple actually allowed us to use in I think iPadOS betas two through four, but then they took it off with beta five because it was too wonky, it was way too buggy, it wasn't working that well. And when people with iPadOS 15 would FaceTime like iOS 14, it would break everything. So this new feature is exactly what it kind of sounds like. So you're able to share exactly the media and content that you're viewing or listening to or interacting with, and then share it via FaceTime with you know, one of your friends, your colleagues, whatever the case may be. That is what SharePlay is. It's a very cool feature. I'll put some B-roll over of exactly what it looks like, but again, it just allows you to view content in real time with somebody that's not near you physically. And whatever happens on one end of the screen will happen on the other end of the screen as well. So if you pause it, so if I pause it, it'll pause for the person that I'm watching it with and vice versa. And then lastly, the next feature is something that I'm actually super excited for because again, it's just, it's starting to kind of bridge iPadOS and macOS even closer together. And it's this idea of universal control. So currently the solution that we have for a macOS and iPadOS, you know, relationship is Sidecar. You know, you grab your iPad, you're on the same Wi-Fi as your Mac computer, you turn on Sidecar and then your iPad turns into a secondary display for that macOS computer, which is awesome to see. It works extremely well and I highly recommend trying it out. But the next thing that's actually gonna come up is this thing called universal control. Universal control is going to allow you to use your iPad kind of as an extended display for your Mac, but without leaving the iPadOS operating system. So you'll be able to drag a mouse, carry it over to your Mac computer, drag and drop data. You can do pretty much anything that you want to, as long as you're probably on the same Wi-Fi connection and you have good speeds. So again, it's just gonna allow you to use one peripheral, like a keyboard and mouse and trackpad to interact with a MacBook and iPad and iMac all at the same time without having, without having to use like AirDrop or anything like that. It has to do more so with your internet connection because again, the mouse will carry over from your iPad to your iMac screen without any physical connectivity, all done through software. But that is something that actually has not come up yet and we're waiting to see what Apple's gonna do with universal control. I'm assuming it's gonna be like a 0.1 update, so we'll probably get it with 15.1 or 0.2, because right now it doesn't look like it's gonna be in the cards for the final release of iPadOS 15. But that's gonna do it for this view. That's pretty much everything. I'll have some honorable mentions in the comments below or in the description below. And then also, if you guys wanna to subscribe to the channel, check out the videos because we go through every single update. You know, so we started with iPadOS 15 all the way through beta eight, and now we're here. So. Let's get out of this view and go to the normal view. So that is gonna do it for this video, everybody. Like you saw, we saw a bunch of new changes with iPadOS 15. My favorite one has to be either the quick note feature, but not because it's a quick note feature, because of the fact that it kind of shows off or gives us maybe a little bit of foreshadowing or a precursor as to what floating windows might be like in the future with maybe an iPadOS 16, 17, 18, 
or whenever Apple is going to give us some sort of real multitasking ability. But then also with that multitasking, I really liked what Apple did with this year's multitasking, right? From a fundamental standpoint, it's identical to what we got last year with iPad OS 14, but it's a little bit friendlier, a little bit easier to use and easier to explain to people that aren't super used to going into the multitasking world. And it also allows you with the app library and also being able to just swipe down and go through your screen, you can kind of multitask with any app as opposed to just the apps that are on your dock, which is the situation we dealt with with iPad OS 14. Some of the downturns are the fact that the Today View is gone. I used to love the Today View. Yes, I know that we get the widgets all over the place, but I don't know, the Today View made me feel like I was into a, going into a completely different operating system, even though it really wasn't. And now with the widgets all over the place and matching iOS 15, it kind of just all seems the same. So that was my one downfall. I want them to bring the Today View back. But other than that, all these changes are welcome changes. I know none of them are absolute game changers, but I think Apple's is getting us ready for something new, right? Something is coming, something's brewing. Give Apple some time. Like I said, don't buy something thinking it's gonna do something tomorrow. Buy it for what it is today. And if it does get those new features that we think are gonna come, then that's just a nice little plus on top of it. But that's gonna do it for this video. Like I said, don't forget to like, comment, subscribe. Comment down below if you guys made it to the end of the video. You guys are legends, but also comment below what your favorite feature is or what's something that you wish Apple brought to iPad OS that we still haven't seen since iPadOS and iOS kind of split up with iPadOS 13. But thanks so much for watching and sticking around for this long video. Until next time, peace. Don't forget to subscribe.